Amen. Blessed assurance. And truly, the three of you are the preachers this morning. <laughs> but I have the opportunity to offer just some brief reflections on this Jazz Sunday. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My first experiences with jazz came through my younger sister. At least these are the first experiences I really remember. I'm sure my parents played some jazz in the house from time to time. I was a dancer growing up, so I'm, I'm sure dance or jazz music was present in those dance classes. But as I was reflecting ahead of today, I was thinking of my sister, who is a trumpet player, and the Auburn High School Jazz Band. A jazz band was not a class that you could take, like regular band or choir or photography, nor was it an after-school club at my high school, like marching band or the spring musical. Jazz band only happened during what was called zero period, which took place before the school day even started. Now, I don't know if you've ever been a teenager, or if you have ever had a teenager, or if you've ever met a teenager, but at least in my experience, something that teenagers don't really love is getting up early in the morning. Is that, is that fair to say? Okay, at least that was true for me. So it takes something really special to get a teenager up out of bed earlier than they would need to be to go to school before the school day officially starts. And that's what jazz band was for my sister and for the other students who were part of it. It was something special. And I sensed that when I watched their performances. I sensed that it was something special. It was different from the music they typically got to play in the other ensembles and bands. It was a space apart from the rest of the day. And it was, I think, sacred. Jazz is a difficult genre to define, and I'm certainly not the person who should try. But what I do know is that for many, it is sacred. You can hear this in what we've already experienced today. You can hear this in those Willie Pickens CDs I know that many of us have that feature Bethany herself in some of them, I think. And you can also hear it in John Coltrane's album, A Love Supreme. John Coltrane was a deeply spiritual person and musician. He was the grandson of not one, but two preachers. He grew up in the church, and he was a student of multiple religions, including Christianity, Buddhism, Jewish mysticism. He was truly a seeker of the divine. And this identity infuses his masterpiece, A Love Supreme. Today's first reading is taken from the liner notes of that album. If you 
have the physical record. <laughs> you can see them there. It is a poem, a prayer, an outpouring of Coltrane's heart to God. It is the written praise that accompanies the musical praise of the album itself. And there are so many parts of this praise that I could pick out and expand upon. Even just hearing it this morning, there were more things catching my attention. But the line that really stuck with me as I was preparing for this morning was the line at the very beginning. It all has to do with it. It all has to do with it. Everything, everything has to do with God. Most of us live our lives in a segmented fashion. There's work and there's play. There's school and there's home. There's vacation and there's the grind. They're sacred and they're secular. We carve out spaces where God is and where God isn't. Spaces where God is and where God is not allowed to be. But God, God does not work that way. It all has to do with it. Jazz is a good teacher for us in this because jazz was born out of multiple musical influences and forms. The blues, spirituals, hymns, ragtime, dance music. Jazz has a history of breaking through these dominant forms and segregations and showing us how it all has to do with it. Consciously or unconsciously, we all choose which parts of our lives to give to God. Maybe we give God Sunday morning, or the moment right before we eat a meal, but we maybe try to keep God out of the workplace. And consciously or unconsciously, we choose the parts of our lives in which we're willing to see God. Maybe we will see God in our friendships and in our success, but we refuse to see where God might be present in our disappointments or our suffering. But my friends, it all has to do with it. I think being a parent, becoming a parent, has helped me see this. It's helped me understand for myself a little more what it means when I call God a holy parent. When my son is laughing, when he's a little fussy, <laughs> it all has to do with it. There's not a separation. It's all there. There isn't any part of us that God doesn't want to know. There isn't any part of our lives where God isn't present. And there isn't one particular way that we're supposed to be with God. We can praise God with words and with music. We can praise God with dance and with stillness. We can praise God with quiet moments and, in the words of the psalmist, with loud, crashing cymbals. It all has to do with it. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen.